a very good afternoon to one and all so let us begin our afternoon session we'll be continuing with the same guest of the day dr vinod vm this session will be chaired by dr jency thomas from the department of chemistry over to you ms good afternoon participants and welcome back to the afternoon session as aishwarya has already pointed out we would be continuing with the session on plagiarism issues and solutions i thank the organizers for giving me the opportunity to share this session and it gives me immense pleasure to invite dr vinod vm once again to continue with the session on plagiarism issues and solutions over to you sir and participants please feel free to post in your questions in the chat box we'll be taking the questions after the session thank you okay thank you very much and the screen, the screen le kaanunnundo ppt hello sir illa sir vannatilla verundu ha kaanunnundengal nu parayonde ha sir kaanundu kaanundu vannu sir okay ipo full screen aayo nokku full screen yes sir yes the slide change cheyunnundo ha change aavunnundu okay okay thank you thank okay. you okay. Yeah, let me let me start my presentation <clears throat> you see we were talking about the plagiarism now we are going moving to the regulation issued by the UGC in this regard actually they came up with this draft regulation in 2017 it is called the promotion of academic integrity and prevention of plagiarism in higher education institutions and they published this draft in 2017 in net and they invited suggestions criticism etc from the general public as well as the academic community and based on that they are finalized this regulation and the regulation to this effect was passed in the year 2018 now you can download this regulation from internet it is freely available and now let us move to the provisions in the ugc regulations so this is the definition given by the ugc for uh, act of plagiarism an act of academic dishonesty and breach of ethics it involves using someone else work as one's own it also includes data plagiarism and self plagiarism i think we have discussed all these things and these are the objectives of this uh, regulation the first is creating academic awareness awareness and responsible conduct of research so you have to conduct the research in responsible and upholding the ethics and promotion of academic integrity and deterrence from plagiarism and we, it should uh, help our research scholars to stay away from plagiarism and develop and dictate uh, develop a system to dictate and prevent plagiarism so you it want to prevent the occurrence of plagiarism in the academic research so and for this they are conducting awareness and training programs throughout the country uh, throughout the country and recently in 2020 <coughs> as per the new regulation if anybody want to do plagiarism sorry research Uh, they have to undergo a compulsory 6 months six month course and out in the course there is a 30 hour program exclusively on research ethics and it deals with plagiarism also so it has become mandatory these days and whenever they are conducting orientation or refresher programs in by the ugc hrdcs they are including a session on plagiarism and they are in addition to that they are giving teacher training uh, to students teachers and research scholars i think i am part of this the third one this one and uh, what are the things <coughs> which we can one can exclude while doing plagiarism check see all quoted works everything that appearing in quotation can be there is a provision to exclude that but i think as per the ugc regulation it is 14 words that means you can use only 14 words in a quote then reference bibliographies tables content context contents etc so we used to give this kind of things in our thesis so that can be excluded even if the so, uh, software identifies similarity there either there is no need for ex, uh, uploading these things or if you by chance upload these things together with your text there is provision to exclude before taking the final report 
and the small similarities of minor in nature, small similarities, then generic term, low standard symbol, standard equ equation, etc. that can be excluded. This is known as common knowledge. That is also excluded. <clears throat> now, in order to you know, do the plagiarism check, the UGC is recommending dividing the thesis into two parts. The first part is called the core area and the second part is called the non-core area. So these are the contents of the, this is core area and, the, and these are the contents of the core area. Abstract summary, hypothesis, observation, result, conclusions, recommendation, etc. So in other words, we can say that analysis, result, interpretation, conclusion, etc. forms the uh, core area. These are the original contributions of the researcher. And there is zero percentage tolerance in that particular area. That means it should be totally plagiarism free. And now the second part is called the non-core area. That So what is left is introduction. So in that area, they are permitting different levels. If the software finds similarity up to 10 percentage, then no problem issue, you can submit your thesis. And if the similarity is between 10 and 40, it is considered as level one offense. And if it is between 40 and 60, it is considered as level 2 offense. And if it is above 60, it is considered as level 3 offense. And there are separate penalties for students and teachers. Students means research scholars, student, normal students and research scholars. So if they identify similarity between 10 to 40 percentage in your work, then you have to resubmit that work within six months. But if there is the similarity is between 40 and 60 percentage, then you will be you, you have to you can resubmit that work only after 12 months. So that that means you will lose one year of your research period. And if it is bit above 60 percentage, if the similarity identified is above 60 percentage, that may even lead to cancellation of the registration. So these are the penalties for the student. And now let us discuss about the penalties for the faculty or research guides. So level one offense means 10 to 40 percentage in the works. Then no publication for a minimum period of one year. Nothing will be available and see permitted to publish over a period of one year. And if it is level two, that means 40 to 60 percentage, no publication for a minimum period of two years. One increment cut, and no supervision of UG, PG, MPhil, and PhD for a period of two years. So you will lose one increment. You won't be able to publish anything for two years, and you cannot supervise anything for two years. And if it's a level three offense, that means above 60 percentage, then no publication for a minimum period of three years, two successive annual increment cut. You lose two increments, and you won't be permitted to supervise anything. That means UG, PG, MPhil, PhD for a period of three years. Suppose you are barred from publishing anything for three years, you are barred from guiding anything for three years, definitely that will adversely affect your research score and your chance of getting placement to the next level. And if the level three offense are repeated, then one can even expect dismissal. So these are the general guidelines. This document is available on the internet. Anybody can download that and you can go through. I have, I have just quoted the, the important points there. Now we are moving to the guidelines for plagiarism check issued by the University of Calicut. This came into effect uh, from 2015 onwards. <clears throat> so this is the definition of plagiarism, turning in someone else's work as one's own. So you are using someone else's work to submit your thesis or research paper. And copying words or ideas from someone else's work without giving credit to the original work. That means using someone's work without giving citation. Failing to put a quotation mark in quotation marks. And so you are using the exact verbatim uh, written by some other authors, but you are giving citation, but the, the quotation mark is missing. So you are claiming that you are para, you have paraphrased, which in effect you have in that verbatim without putting in inverted commas. Giving incorrect information about a quotation, that means error type of plagiarism. You are deliberately giving an inaccurate citation. 
then changing uh, changing words but copying the sentence structure of a source without giving the credit to the original source so you are doing some kind of little bit of paraphrasing without uh, giving a proper acknowledgement to the original author then copying more than continue uh, words continuously from a source whether you give credit to the original work or not that means you cannot copy more than 20 words at a stretch even if you are putting it in, in within a quotation it will be considered as a plagiarism as per the guidelines of calicut university then manipulation or misrepresentation of others work published or unpublished as he, her or his own by modifying numerical values figures tables etc this is generally called either fabrication of result or fa falsification the fabrication simply means without doing research in that particular area you are cooking data and falsification means you are doing research and you are generating some data but you think that that data cannot satisfy your objective so you will do some manipulation you will change the result alter the result then you submit that is called falsification and that too and these two are also considered plagiarism by university of calicut and uh, this is the guideline if you are a research scholar and if you want to do plagiarism check for your thesis you have to divide your thesis into three parts generally uh, introduction and review is the first file and this is the format in which you have to submit your file 01 introduction and review then here you have to type then your name as in your certificates so second file is research methodology you can write research method or materials or, or method anything you can like and followed by your the name of the scholar and the third file is analysis result interpretation conclusion etc and the fourth type file has to be the title page and if you are submitting your thesis online and we are, we prefer you to submit uh, this is online due to this covid issue there you have to include one identification document it has to, it may be an identity card issued by your institution or you can uh, use the uh, university order that uh, you have that gave you uh, permission to do research in that department <clears throat> and we always prefer pdf document <clears throat> and for identifying the similarity and, and evaluating that the university has set this standard the university has set this standard so again here we are dividing the thesis into two parts science theses and non science theses and uh, there is the change is only in the introduction and review part if it is a science thesis you are permitted only 25% of similarity so if the similarity is above 25% you cannot submit if it is below 25% or 25% there is no issue technical issue you can submit and for non science theses the same is 35% so if even if it is go to 34 or 35 you can submit for research methods and analysis and result the criteria is same for both science and non science theses it's only 25% and for analysis it is only 10% and these are the uh, some guidelines that you have to keep in your mind that while submitting your thesis there is no need to include the auxiliary pages which called the date declaration table of contents certificates and then, and then appendix there is no need for or submitting all these things the references and the end of chapters and sometimes you may give a bibliography a list of reading at the end of the thesis there is no need for that and the appendices also there is no need for that so what you have to include is the text you are writing immediately after the heading introduction to the conclusion only that much part is required overly pages are not required <clears throat> and you may keep this thing also do not wait for the 11th hour i told you earlier that people used to come and say i want to do a plagiarism check and today itself i have to submit my thesis then you are taking a huge risk because if the sim uh, similarity identified by the software is over the uh, maximum limit then you have to rewrite everything for which it may take some time so you are taking a calculate a uh, huge risk there no i want a uh, term it calculated risk you are taking a huge risk it is always better you have a cushion period of 15 days between 
plagiarism check and final submission so that you will get ample time for making modification or changes. And <clears throat> if you're, when you're submitting, you are permitted to submit your own thesis or research paper. If you send someone else paper, research paper or thesis for plagiarism check, uh, we won't accept that. And the contents of the thesis submitted for plagiarism check and evaluation should be the same thing. That means you have to submit the same copy of the thesis that you are going to submit for evaluation for plagiarism checking also. And certificate on plagiarism check shall be issued only if the percentage of similarities are within the acceptable limit. So you are coming here and in the introduction part, there is 40 percentage similarity and you ask for the certificate, we will never issue. And certificate shall be issued only after pre-submission. You know, there's a this, uh, technical procedure that before submitting your thesis for evaluation, you have to present that thesis before the doc uh, in front of the doctoral committee. And the doctoral committee may or may not give you some suggestions. If they give some suggestions, then you have to incorporate that suggestions in your thesis. Then your text will change. Then you have, if they incorporate uh, suggest something, and if you have incorporated that suggestion, then the text as the text changes, you have to do plagiarism check again. That is the reason why we keep on saying that we will issue the certificate on plagiarism check only after pre-submission. Before pre-submission, you can do, and if the doctoral committee does not, uh, uh, there is no, uh, they do not, uh, say, suppose they are not recommending any changes then you can use the earlier copy that means that uh, this is the soft copy you have done uh, plagiarism check the same can be you, you can get a certificate based on that soft copy so normally if you are submitting or presenting your thesis before the doctoral committee they may ask the report of plagiarism check there the soft copy of the plagiarism checking report is sufficient and if the committee recommends some suggestions, you have to you incorporate that suggestions in that particular area. Suppose that is methodology part. Then only you have to do only the methodology part. There is no need for doing introduction and review, introduction review and analysis part. Methodology part you can do, and uh, if the uh, it is within the limit, definitely you can submit your thesis. Suppose the, the, they are not recommending any change, then you can use the earlier one. That means the document you have checked prior to your pre-submission, you can get the certificate based on that. And the scholars are uh, directed to bring six copies of the certificate. One copy we will keep in the library. One copy you may give to the, your research guide. One copy you may keep in the department where it is submitted. One copy you have to submit to the university. And it's always better you keep an extra copy. That is why we are asking you to bring six copies. Okay. <clears throat> I think I have completed the theoretical uh, overview of the uh, topic. Now, are you ready to take a quiz? Hello? So that you can evaluate yourself. Uh, sir, hello? Uh, every, uh, hello, sir. Ah, uh, sir, everyone can view your uh, slide, That is, but they cannot uh, reply. They can only give uh, the reply in the chat box. Uh, so what we are, what we will we, either you have to read out the chat box or I will uh, ask the question and I will uh, answer myself. So, what you prefer, uh, sir? Uh, like how you wish. Either of the options is okay for us. Okay, then then I, I will uh, to save your time. I will I will ask the question and I will answer myself. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay, fine. Thank you. Okay, now you can see here that this is the this is this is the first question. Actually, this is the original text, and this is the text submitted by the scholar. And the question here is: Suppose you are the evaluators, and you are the student is presenting this before you, and your task is to say whether this is plagiarism or not. So this is your task, and for the time being, I am assuming. Uh, in both roles. I'm a student as well as the evaluator. So this is not plagiarism. Why? Even though the student has copied the entire text from here to here, they have copied. He has copied. The same thing here. But he has put inverted comma here 
and you can see the inverted comma here and he has given proper citation so generally we can say that this is not plagiarism but if you are going by the guidelines of Calicut University where the university specifically say that you cannot uh, use more than 20 words in a quotation then it becomes plagiarism then it becomes plagiarism this is not acceptable but if you are using the general condition that as everything uh, put in inverted comma can be excluded then, then this is okay the second thing <clears throat> second question again this is the original text and this is the text submitted by the scholar and you have to tell whether this is plagiarism or not so in this case this is a clear case of plagiarism the reason is that uh, uh, there is no doubt whatsoever because the student has copied the exact sentence From here to here, he has copied. Everything is the same thing here. And he has given citation also. But if you are giving citation like this, you are claiming that you have pra properly paraphrased this information. Or in other words, you are claiming that you have used the idea from the original paper, but you have expressed, expressed that idea in your own language, uh, sentence or your own language which is false so this is a clear case of plagiarism and if uh, you know, so, so there are two options here either he has to paraphrase this particular information properly or he has to put inverted comma here then it won't be plagiarism it will come under plagiarism now the third thing here this is the original text and this is the text submitted by the scholar if you compare these two texts then you can see that he, the student has presented the same idea or he has borrowed idea from this paper this paper and he has presented here but somehow he has paraphrased here but what is missing here is the citation see here he has somehow somehow paraphrased this this information but the citation is missing here so this is a clear case of plagiarism and this is the not the acceptable method so this is clear case of plagiarism now moving to move to the fourth one again this is the original this is the original and this is the student paper here you can say that he even though he has borrowed this idea from the original paper he has somewhat paraphrased this information and he has given the citation also so we can say that this is okay this is not plagiarism now the fourth and fifth one suppose if you are writing a research paper and you are writing that Sri EMS Namburi Pad was the first chief minister of Kerala uh, does the source of this fact need to be cited the answer is no because it is a known fact almost everyone in the Kerala society knows that he must not be part was the first chief minister so we can say that this is a common knowledge so there is no need for citation even if the software identifies similarity here so there is no need to cite this information now the last one <clears throat> suppose you are using this information in your text so in your research paper or thesis whether to give citation to this information or not the answer is definitely you have to cite this information and the reason is very simple because this is not common knowledge since this is not common knowledge you have to give appropriate citation to this information otherwise and otherwise it definitely it will definitely come under the category plagiarism now the golden rule about the plagiarism is when in doubt cite so if you think that this sentence belong or this idea or this sentence belongs to someone else if you think so it is always better to give citation so it is it's a kind of taking an anticipatory bail otherwise it may lead to the complications we have already discussed but if, uh, while starting the presentation i told you that around uh, 80 to 85 percentage of the scholar scholars who come for plagiarism check have shown certain sim symptoms of civil, uh, nervousness 
Now, just see this picture. And recently, we were also to this immunization camp. And you just compare it, uh, uh, today with the, your olden days. When you were a kid, you were informed about this uh, immunization program and you were taken to the immunization camps. So you, you were, uh, we, were, we all were nervous at, by, that, by that time. We were all nervous. nervous. But somehow they will, uh, they will administer the vaccine in us. And uh, for the next three few days, three, four days, we will be a bit uncomfortable, maybe uh, pain, fever, swelling, etc. But after a few days, everything will come down, subside, and we will get immunity uh, from that disease for the rest of our life. But when we went recently to the immunization camp, we know that this uh, we have to fight this corona. We were aware of this, and we were not tense because we were aware of its advantage. Likewise, this is the plagiarism check is exactly the same thing. When you come for, if you have proper awareness about the plagiarism and how the software is working uh, and uh, what are the provisions in the UGC regulation and the university regulation and what are the methods with which you can overcome, then you can face the plagiarism check with uh, relative, relatively ease of, easy mind or without getting nervous. So in other words, you can say that this plagiarism checking is can be compared to a traffic light. You will find three kinds of light there. One is red, one is yellow, and other is green. If you see the green light, then the road is perfectly OK. If it is yellow, then you have, you have to drive cautiously because the signal may change red at any time. And if it is red, then you have to stop and you have uh, to wait till the road is clear. Likewise, the uh, original original or Urkund will give you some indication whether you can proceed or whether you have to do some modifications, or etc. And now let me say that in the first slide we have, um, that means when we discussed about the reason why people do plagiarism check, uh, the first reason was, look, everyone is doing, so I do have a right. So this is the answer to that. Right is right, even if no one is doing it. Wrong is wrong, even if everyone is doing sent against him. So someone else is doing is not a justification for doing plagiarism. And this is the last one I want to uh, have in this presentation. Uh, this is actually a quote from Abraham Lincoln. You can fool all the people some of the time, and some of the people all the time, but you cannot fool all the people all the time. Suppose you are a research scholar, and if you want to get a PhD, you have to fool only a, hand, a handful of people. Say, for example, your guide, the person doing plagiarism check, the members of your doctoral committee, and two or three external evaluators. So if you are able to fool these people, then you will get the PhD. But I told you that now almost all universities have entered a memorandum of understanding with UGC in Filmnet. Thereby, it is mandatory for them to upload the awarded thesis into Shodhganga repository. And once it is in Shodhganga repository, anyone can access it, provided they have an internet. And if you go, if you if you are applying for the higher position, like a professor or a pro vice chancellor or a registrar, people may start doing plagiarism check on your work. And if they find something mischievous, definitely uh, you have to go through all the consequences we have uh, discussed earlier. So uh, my humble request to all of you that please support the integrity in ethics while doing uh, research. And you know that plagiarism is a vast area. So far, we have co covered only uh, the tip of that iceberg. And the information, the image, everything I have taken from other sources. Only the experience belongs to me. Everything else belongs to Google, Turnitin, Urkund, Urkund SlideShare, and Infinite. And so far, I have used the infographic presentation. So this is the infographic way of acknowledging the contribution of all the contributors. So thank you. This is the end of my first presentation. Let me move to the second one. OK. Hello, can you see the uh, uh, the report on your screen? Hello? Yes, sir, yes. Okay, <clears throat> now I tell you. 
see now we are moving on to the interpreting the report how we can interpret the report or what are the different parts of the report and before starting that presentation let me give uh, let me show you one or uh, original uh, real report um, generated by the original software so there are basically three parts to this report the first part is called the summary the second part is the body of the re uh, report and the third part is called the side by side comparison so this is the uh, summary of the report here you can see that it is the introduction and review part of a thesis it was uploaded on 8th uh, November 2021 and here you can see a figure that is similarity is 14 percentage that means the information in the text we have uploaded have 14 the 14 percentage of the information we have uploaded have similar information in in internet publishers database or student database that is why the software is saying that the similarity is 14 percentage that means 86 percentage the student the scholar has written so 14 percentage is uh, the this rep, the uh, this part i mean introduction and review part has 14 percentage of information plus in this particular part have similar similar information available in internet publishers database and student material i hope that is clear and here you can see the sources from where the similarities were identified the urls here these are the sources and the extreme right you can see eight it indicates that from this particular document the software has identified eight similarities and from this they have identified three similarities from this from this one likewise you can see So these are the similarities. So this is called the summary, which will give you an overall view. And please see that the software, the original also used the term similarity here. They haven't used the term plagiarism because they will never claim that they have identified plagiarism. They will claim that they have only identified similarity and it is your duty now to distinguish between similarity and plagiarism so this is the first part this is called the summary it will give you which will give you an overall view about the report you have uploaded now we are moving to the second part which is called the body of the report so this is the text from here the text the the text that we have uploaded begins and here you can see in this particular box it tells you that whatever the student has written here within this box is 41 percentage similar to an information available in this particular document i repeat that whatever the scholar has written here is 41 percentage similar to an information available in this particular document and here you can see it is 1 bar 8 182 182 it indicates that this is the first similarity identified by the software and there are totally there are 182 similarities in this document and this is the first similarity i hope this is clear I will repeat that once again, whatever is appearing in this box, the software says that this is 41% similar to any information available in this particular document. Now let's move to the second, second thing. Second, here you can see another box. So the interpretation is whatever the scholar has written here is 100% similar to any information available in this particular document. And this is the second similarity identified. And moving on to the third one, you can see from here to here, this is 92% similar to an information available in this particular document. So if you want to access the do, uh, access this document, you just copy this document and paste it in a, a search engine. Then if it is available for uh, in the open, um, uh, open sources, then definitely you can access that particular document. So this is the, uh, this is how we interpret the report. And there are no, no issues here. 
here there are no other no issues because nothing is given in box now let us move to the side by side comparison this is the third part side by side comparison here you can see the side by side comparison so what they are doing here is they are accumulating all the similarities identified in the report and they are placing it side by side so the interpretation here is here you can see this is the statement written by the scholar so this is the first similarity here also you will see the cross reference <coughs> and this is the statement in that particular document so this was the original source and this is the sentence or statement in the original source and this is what the scholar has written so you can compare these two text to decide whether this is similarity or plagiarism and in this case you can see so this is the text written by the scholar and this is the text given in the, this is the text in this this particular document in this particular document and there is 100% similarity there and this is the second one identified by the software and this is the third one this is the statement written by the scholar and that statement is 92% similar to uh, this is that information and that um, information and this is, this information has come from this particular document so if you compare this two text then you will see that 92% of the words are same so these are the parts of the report now i'm moving to the second presentation this interpreting the report that will make things more clear can you see my presentation hello yes sir it is available is it full screen now yes sir full screen okay is, is it changing slide changing yes slides are changing sir. okay thank you now i told you that in the urkun gives you some indication just like traffic signals and here you see that if the percentage of similarity is zero in a particular document it appears in green color if it is if even if it is one percentage now then you can see that color is light yellow but as the percentage moves up it shows it from light yellow it turns into bright yellow and if it crosses some 30 35 percentage or so it turns into red color and if it crosses some 60 percentage or so it turns into black color so it gives you some indication about the similarity in that particular document now we are moving to different parts we have already discussed that this is called the summary of the report because you will get an overall idea about the document you have submitted but always keep in mind that this is the not the indication of plagiarism in that particular document there is a huge difference between plagiarism and similarity so this is only similarity and this is the second part we have already discussed the text uploaded by the scholar and the software will mark the similarity in boxes so this is perfectly okay this is where the similarities were identified and this is the side by side comparison where you will get uh, the original information along with the information you have written or you have presented in your paper now how to interpret this report so what we are trying to do here is distinguishing between similarity so i told you that the software only identifies similarity and we have to categorize or classify these similarities into two one is acceptable similarity this is acceptable similarity and this is non-acceptable similarity and this is also called plagiarism this non-acceptable similarity is also called plagiarism and now how, uh, we are going to discuss how, how can we do that what is the criteria we are using for distinguishing between acceptable similarity and non-acceptable similarity or plagiarism there are no hard and fast rules for that we have to use our own common sense here for that so if you want to identify uh, if you want to know what is acceptable similarity then there are basically five types of similarities then the first one is called the terminological similarity so if you are suppose you are doing research in marketing in, under the commerce uh, faculty of commerce so these are some standard terms we, we may use while writing our thesis or research paper 
you cannot substitute these terms so publicity promotion service selling research distribution pricing advertising so these are the standards like this every subject have their every subject has their own terminology the standard terminology which you cannot change for example for rice or rice sativa you cannot change that so the software will identify similarities even if you write the sta uh, this standard terms but we can exclude that from the uh, final report because they are these are standard terminologies used in that particular area or subject so this is terminological similarity similarities causing due to usage of standard terms now there is another similarity which is called the methodological similarity so while this happens especially in the in the case of science subjects for doing a particular experiment you have to follow a particular protocol there is a, there will be a standard protocol for doing that experiment whether you are writing about that protocol or someone else is writing about that protocol there are chances for similar um, a similarity and such similarities are called the methodological similarities which is also comes under the category acceptable similarity and we have discussed about the common knowledge suppose you are writing that the, the data for your study was collected from the 14 districts of kerala namely kasargod to uh, trivandrum you are writing the names of uh, 14 districts in kerala so we all know that there are 14 districts in Kerala and these are the standard names of the districts. You cannot change that. That is a common knowledge that information has been in the public domain for such a long period. So it's, no, everybody knows that. So that is common knowledge. And you are, suppose you are writing that New Delhi is the capital of India and Tirundurum is the capital of Kerala. Software may identify that, but there is no need for giving citation to such sim, uh, information because it they comes under the category common knowledge and even if the sim software identifies similarities here you can exclude that before generating the final report and there is a fourth category which is called the common expression common expression and the common expression simply means that suppose for example while interpreting the statistical figures we may write that since the p-value is greater than 0 0.05 the association between variable A and variable B is not significant. Or we may write that from the above table, it can be inferred that likewise. So these are the common expressions used by everyone while writing a research report or thesis. And the software doesn't know whether this is common expression or something else. So they will identify similarity. So we can, there is also a provision for excluding such things from the final report. This is called common expression. And there's another thing called the properly cited items. This is a typical example. In literature, if the quote is more than three lines or four lines, then you, they used to indent that information. So here you can see they, they have indented that information. So it clearly in, uh, tells the reader that this is a quote from a sources, an, another source. But if you upload this text into the original software, the software will change the format of the document. So everything will appear like, instead of uh, appearing like this, the soft, software will change the format, everything like, will be appearing like this. So you cannot, ident you cannot uh, tell the, whether this is properly cited or not. So the software may show similarity or identify similarity in this particular area which is again an acceptable similarity because a proper citation has already been given but the software failed to to distinguish or identify that this is a properly cited item so these are the basic uh, similarities which you can categorize under or classify into acceptable similarity so whenever you come across a text so what you have to do now how to distinguish between so this is the text the software has identified the software has identified similarity here so this is the text 
when you come across a text like this either you ask yourself or you and your guide to get you sit together and you uh, ask yourselves that whether this can be categorized under terminological similarity or is the similarity due to usage of standard terms or is it methodological similarity is it the is a procedure or protocol is it a common knowledge is it a common expression is it a properly cited information if answer to any of these five questions are yes any even if you get uh, answer to one question yes so okay this is terminological similarity then you can consider that as terminological uh, acceptable similarity if you get no to all these five questions then it's always better to treat that as non acceptable similarity or plagiarism is that clear hello yes sir it is clear now okay no it's okay okay so that is the criteria you are saying whenever you come across a text like this you ask yourself and you have to do that objectively and you have to be 100 percentage sure if you think that this okay this is 90 percentage terminological similarity still it is better to consider as plagiarism or non-acceptable similarity that is the golden rule that is what the golden rule says if you are in doubt cite Going to show you some parts from the original report. used to ask the student whether this is acceptable similarity or plagiarism or the reason and they have to tell the reason but since uh, there are some issues i think i i will sh I'll show this and i'll answer myself or do you want to answer um, sir either okay. way it's okay but uh, if I, if we have to answer i should be replying that's why okay 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 then okay let's let the students answer this so this okay, is the sir. text okay this is the text so the question is open to the participants so this is a similarity identified by the urkun software and you have to tell me whether this is acceptable similarity or not the interpretation is like this whatever the text the scholar has written from here to here is 72 percentage similar to an information available in this particular document so what you have to answer is whether this is acceptable similarity or plagiarism and you have to tell the reason also dear participants you all can post your answer in the chat box so that i can read out Salam, I'm going class. I'm going to send you a Very good. I'm going to send you And the answer is to you. Sir, Kitty, sir, Kitty. Uh, sir, uh, everyone is saying it is acceptable similarity. Because the reason? Because it's a known fact. It's yeah. common knowledge. It's, yes, definitely. That's very, very good. Very good. Now, what about this one? The interpretation is like this 57 percentage similarity. The information here is presented here is 57 percentage similar to the information available in this particular document. You tell me whether this is plagiarism or not.
ആൻസർ കിട്ടിയോ പറയുന്നുണ്ടോ എന്തെങ്കിലും ബിക്കോസ്റ്റ് <laughs> Uh, sir it's again said this is not plagiarism because these yeah. are common terms yes absolutely right and what about this one not plagiarism hmm. okay it's properly Reason. cited yeah this is this are in uh, information you see ibid means in the above quoted so yeah. they may give in put either as put not or reference what most probably footnotes okay. okay sir next question yes i'll show the so this is the text written by the scholar on the uh, left side in yellow you can see this is the text written by the scholar and this is the information in the original document you tell me whether this is plagiarism or not the clue is you compare the data uh sir it's not plagiarism the data is different yeah absolutely but the terms are there are they have used the standard terms there absolutely right so this is not plagiarism and now earlier in the earlier session some someone has asked so if you are using that graph then you see in, in the same format is not a, not an issue but if the data is the same then it is plagiarism if the data is different then it won't be plagiarism and what about this one any answer uh, no sir actually this is not it's plagiarism not plagiarism this is not because plagiarism because it's uh, common yeah. terms no yes this is actually this uh, this is a part from uh, one uh, this is submitted under the faculty uh, drama so these are the common terms they are using there so standard terms this is a typical example of terminological similarity and uh, what about this one somebody someone from chemistry can tell this So this is again not plagiarism, I think. So terminological similarity. Yes, absolutely. This that the similarity has come in the term HUMO, LUMO, and this kind of chemical terms. Okay. What about this one? Someone, uh, I think there was some somebody from mathematics. They can tell this very easily.
this is actually a report Sir, generated in 2010. Yeah. Uh, it said that everyone uh, has their own values, but the format is same. Yes, absolutely. These are the common expression. These are the common expression used in mathematics, the derivation, etc. So this is perfectly acceptable. And what about this one? Everybody can answer this. There is nothing wrong here. This is perfectly okay. And this is where the similarity has identified. This is a report is generator in the old. Ah, pardon. Ah, please go on, please. Not pleasure, sir. Because yeah, this is uh, uh, what statistical terms, no? Ah, sta standard statistical terminology. Stat absolutely. Yes. Oh, absolutely right. And what about this one? Anybody from botany? Again, this is not plagiarism because all these are biological yeah. terms. Yes, biological. Absolutely right. So they are describing a plant and these are the uh, standard terms. And what about this one? Everybody can tell. This is very easy. These are references. Yeah, friends. So to tell me whether this is acceptable or plagiarism. It is acceptable. Definitely, definitely. And what about this one? acceptable why this is an, a, a this name of a conference which you can change uh. yes okay okay what about this one this is also acceptable. Yeah. organizations no nah, name okay. of the standard you, can, you cannot change that okay yes. uh. now what about this one this is the procedure standard procedure Yes. So, Sorry. acceptable or not? But they have not the reference. Yeah. So in that it sense, is standard procedure. Yes, in the standard procedure, you have to just give your citation. So this is perfectly acceptable. Um, acceptable. Yeah. What about this one? This is also standard procedure. Standard procedure. So it's perfectly okay. okay. And what about this one? See, I think you uh, you have some doubt. When you have some doubt, you ask these five questions to yourself. Whether this comes under terminological similarity. Or whether this is standard terms. Whether this is standard procedure. Whether this is common knowledge. Whether this is common expression. Whether this is properly cited items. If you get yes to any of these questions, then this is acceptable similarity and if you get no to all these five questions then you better treat it as plagiarism it's plagiarism yeah the reason here uh, it doesn't come under any of those uh, set yeah uh, five criteria. Criteria. it is not terminology not methodology not common expression not common knowledge and it is not properly cited so you better treat it as plagiarism, plagiarism. And, what, what about this one? Here also it's not cited. It is plagiarism. Yeah, it is not cited. So perfectly, it is not terminology, methodology, common expression. Uh, so the and answer to all these five questions are no here also. So this is perfectly plagiarized. plagiarized. So this is also the same thing. It's also the same thing. So now you have some idea that uh, how to distinguish between plagiarism and similarity. 
ninga idea kittile so now yes sir if it is plagiarism what you have to do that's another thing see basically you can take four approaches here the first approach if you come across, come across a text like this the first thing that you can do is put an inverted comma here and here and give citation here so that is the first solution first solution but when you are using this quotation mark always remember the rule about quotation the more the quotation then less acceptance for your thesis or it generally it reduces the value of your thesis more quotation <clears throat> and you have to remember the guideline of the calicut university if you are a student from calicut university you cannot put more than 20 uh, words at a stretch in a even if you are using a quotation mark so using quotation mark here is out of question you cannot use quotation mark here then the second method and the best method is paraphrasing paraphrasing means you have to retain the idea presented in the original but you have to express that in your own sentence or your own words then also you have to give proper citation here proper citation here so paraphrasing and given giving citation is the second option uh, second option and the, be the best among the four options so first is putting quotation mark and giving citation second is paraphrasing and giving citation and the third thing is in certain cases uh, you you may have you have to quote uh, you have to quote big quotations suppose a definition or something else maybe uh, more than 20 words in such case the guide has the authority guide says that this is inevitable this is standard terminology this is methodology this is a uh, common expression this is a uh, common knowledge this is properly cited items if the guide is willing to give that in writing then we then also we will exclude that part while generating the final report so getting exemption from the guide is the third option and the last option if the three th the, the, the earlier stated three things that's quotation mark and citation paraphrasing and citation exemption from the guide if all if these things are not working then there is only one option you have to exclude this this particular text from your thesis or research paper and this is the method these are the methods we are using to address the issue of plagiarism and now i have completed my presentation this is time for you to uh, raise any issues any confusions or clarifications you need so Thank i'm you. stopping okay okay let me stop my presentation thank you sir thank you for this instructive and explanatory talk over to dr jensi thomas to further moderate the session ma'am and uh, he gave demonstration and how to resolve it it was an interactive interactive session participants live were actively answering all the questions so i guess uh, the session is now open for questions and uh, Uh, excuse me miss if you have uh, any miss, questions you can type it in the chat uh, miss, box miss excuse me miss uh, ma'am we were not able to hear you from the beginning please uh, can you uh, start from the beginning uh, due to some technical issues we couldn't hear you uh, so kindly start from the beginning ma'am Uh, ma'am it's not audible now so can you hear me uh, can i you can't hear? see any questions in the chat yes. box i think the interactive session was really useful because they have got a lot of idea now 
about what is acceptable and what is not allowed uh, in using similar terminology. So nobody has asked any questions so far. Organization committee his valuable tourism. Uh, thank you. Uh, since I am a thesis at uh, University of Calicut, the library uh, and the information uh, section there, information science section there is really helpful in helping students to identify the extent of plagiarism in their thesis. So on behalf of St. Thomas College Autonomous Trishur, I extend our sincere gratitude to Dr. Vinod for spending his valuable time. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, since we don't Aishwarya, have any... could you unmute, unmute yourself? Ma'am, I'm audible, right? Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah. Hello. Yes. Ma'am, I'm audible, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, thank you, ma'am. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, for uh, again, uh, once again, for your valuable talk. It was very much informative. It was explanatory. Uh, I think it would be helpful to all our uh, research scholars as well as our uh, faculty members. Uh, so once again, uh, we thank you, sir. And uh, once again, we thank uh, Dr. Jensi Thomas for chairing the session. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Dear participants, a note to you all uh, the feedback link will be posted in this chat box. Uh, so please uh, kindly fill in the feedback form. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. Uh, without further delay, let's move on to the validatory function. Uh, so uh, for the validatory function, we'll be uh, moving. So uh, the validatory function is yet to. The validatory function is about to begin. Uh, so we'll be uh, moving uh, or uh, the same. We are following the same link. Um, so, dear participants, welcome to the validatory function. Moving on to the validatory function, I welcome Dr. Joyce Jones to welcome the gathering. A very good afternoon to all of you. Uh, welcome to the valedictory function of the two day national seminar and research scholars meet. Uh, the two days has been spent in fruitful discussions and also in knowing new things and refreshing what we have already known. The need for the hour for St. Thomas College and for all the higher education institutions right now is not to be just consumers of education but rather to be producers of education. And events like this would very efficiently uh, ensure and inspire not only our research scholars, but all the other stakeholders like PG scholars to be producers of information and knowledge wherein they can completely transform that theoretical knowledge into practical applications and fruitful research. So coming to the duty which has been interested to me, it is to, it is to welcome the dignitaries in this particular session. Uh, first of all, I add, first of all, I welcome uh, Father Martin, our beloved principal, to the session. Father Martin has ensured that all the technicalities all the support has been provided, not only to this particular national seminar, but to all the research endeavors in our college. My heartfelt welcome 
to you, Father, in the name of Research Council. Uh, in the name of formality, the next person to be welcomed is the Dean of Research, Dr. William Chaco. Dr. William Chaco is a very silent but efficient player. In his very inimitable manner, he ensures that the work is done, but he ensures that there is no fuss around. Especially in this scenario where we had pandemics and we did not know whether this national seminar would be offline or online, Dr. Chaco ensured that these two days would go on smoothly by very nicely coordinating all the stakeholders and organizers involved in this session. Not only regarding this particular seminar, but Dr. Chaco has very efficiently hemmed this uh, research endures of St. Thomas College. My heartfelt welcome to you, Dr. Chaco. Next to be welcomed into this session is our convener, Dr. Anne Mary Kay and Dr. Viju, the co convener. Dr. Anne Mary needs no introduction to the research uh, family of St. Thomas College. She has not only proved her personal meritoriousness in research, but she has also brought in wonderful funding in the form of DST FIST to a college. She has helmed the two-day national seminar very efficiently in spite of all the confusions regarding whether this should go offline, online, and in spite of the multiple sessions being run parallelly. My uh, welcome to you, Dr. Anne Mary, even though in the name of formality. Dr. Viju was the co-convener, and he was the representative of the arts and social sciences stream of this national seminar. Unfortunately, he's not present with us in this offline, online session, in this virtual session, but I welcome him also. Dr. Jones is present here, and he was uh, instrumental in ensuring that all the multiple sessions ran smoothly without any glitches. Heartfelt welcome to you, Dr. Johns. I also welcome all the participants, all the research scholars, research guides, other members of research council, faculty, and all the other technicians who have been instrumental in the success of this uh, venture. Welcome to one and all. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Now, I welcome our beloved principal, Reverend Father Martin K. for the presidential address. Good afternoon to one and all. Dr. Chako VM, the Dean of Research, Dr. Joyce, Assistant Coordinator, Dr. Ran Mary and Dr. Viju, the coordinators of this seminar, webinar. Dear faculty members, the Jodis, deans, the such scholars, delegates, and dear friends. So we have come to the close of a two-day session. And I think we are glad that for having able to participate in a wonderful sessions from the resource persons, eminent resource persons. Research is a noble endeavor. Scientific achievements have contributed materially and substantially to the state of human development. Continuing achievements from research committees and communities are needed to enable a strong future for humankind. William W. Nasroff, the editor-in-chief of Indoor Air, has listed the challenges of becoming a successful researcher. And I quote, the following are the challenges or the following are the requisites to become a successful researcher. He says, number one, be inquisitive. Learning is an ongoing pursuit. Every day, 
presents a new opportunity. So engage in activities that provide rich opportunities to learn. Point number two, be industrious. That means work hard. Manage your time wisely to make effective progress in pursuing important goals. Number three, be ethical. Just now we have gone through the plagiarism session from the Nath Kumar sir from the University of Calicut. No? So be ethical. Be scrupulously honest in working with the data. Number four, be ambitious. Be determined to succeed even in the face of challenging objectives and challenging obstacles. Number five, be collegial. Collegiality is fostered by mutual respect and shared purpose and which is very much synergistic. Beyond contributing to collective benefits, individuals who cons consistently exhibit a collegial spirit can realize even personal gains. Point number six, get involved. Vitality in scholarly communities derives from active participation of its members. So volunteer your time, review research articles for journals. Number seven, master fundamentals. That means become expert in your core scholarly discipline. Point number eight, challenge assumptions. That means be skeptical, question that basis, question the basis of what we believe, insist on evidence to support claims, at the same time remain respectful and avoid cynicism. Point number nine, read with intent, the large stock and rapid generation rate of scholarly literature requires that reading be carried out strategically. And the last point, number 10, write with integrity. Writing is a vehicle for discovery. Recording one's scholarly ideas accurately in a logical structure and with appropriate supportive evidence cultivates clear thinking. Academic reward systems place high value on successful writing outcomes. So these are the 10 points or 10 commandments given by William W. Wasroff, the editor-in-chief of indo air for the aspiring scholars. Hope that our two-day session was very fruitful. I take this opportunity to congratulate the Dean of Research, Chaco William, as well as Joyce Smith, as well as the team members, and Dr. Anne Mary and Dr. Viju, and other um, Research Council members, as well as the entire crew who have made this event successful. Wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Father. Thank you for this informative talk. Now I invite Dr. Chaku VM, the Dean of Research, to give a review of our seminar and the Research Scholar Meet. Welcome, sir. Good afternoon, all. Dear Principal, Dr. Father Martin K. A., uh, dear coordinator of the conference seminar, Dr. Anne Mary K. A., and joint coordinator, Dr. Viju MJ, and uh, joint coordinator of research council, Dr. Joyce Jos. Dear vice principals, heads of the departments, uh, deans, research guides, uh, research scholars from various institutions. As we have experienced, we have completed two day national seminar on interdisciplinary research approaches and 
process scholars meet 2020-2022 successfully. I am very happy to sit here because we have several sessions scheduled and as we have experienced, we have eminent personalities for various sessions. So that is a uh, that was very beautiful. All the sessions were was very beautiful, and uh, most of the research scholars and research guides attended this seminar, and I hope several insights may be obtained or several ideas might have reached in the minds of in the brains of the research scholars and research guides only through this type of discussion we will get new and new ideas or we can follow new ideas we can create new ideas and based on that ideas we can develop our research activities so that is the that is the one of the aim of uh, conducting this type of seminars and moreover uh, on behalf of this research council there is a regular practice to conduct uh, for conducting a national seminar in every year so we successfully completed that activity and moreover we are giving recognition to the achievements of various process scholars and process guides we have already awarded we have already presented several awards like sandob research award for uh, for the research faculty uh, best paper award best research scholar award etc etc so we could present to the right person in time so that is a, that will be a great motivation to the research scholars and uh, <coughs> Many of the research scholars, most of the research scholars, experience uh, shared their experience and shared their present status through short presentation, one minute, two minute presentation. That was very nice. I could uh, participate in all presentations, so I feel it is very, very nice. And uh, at last, we have given a platform to present new research insights so we could uh, give a chance to uh, researchers to present their research activities present papers so that is also uh, that is also a success of our research seminar moreover it is a gathering it is a gathering of research community of st thomas college so there should be some individual or some researcher uh, in future at higher level we are expecting that like cnr rao or uh, in statistics we have cr rao that is internationally reputed person so we are expecting uh, such uh, research outputs from the scholars side so uh, so I, I i mean this is a gathering of research scholars and guides to share the experience and to grow further and uh, Definitely, the thoughts and ideas and uh, insights given by various resource persons. You know, uh, Professor P. G. Shankaran. He is an academician. He is a professor pro at the same time. He is an academician uh, at higher level. So he has given several insights. And we had uh, Dr. Aravind Kumar Rangan from IIT Hyderabad. Dr. P. P. Pradyumnan from University of Calicut. Uh, Dr. Ruby John, she's a scientist. I think she's a, a B grade, G grade scientist. It's a higher level in the scientist level of Regional Cancer Center, Tiruvanduram. Dr. Priya Nair is a research uh, officer, Higher Education Council. Uh, Dr. P. Baskaran Nair, formerly professor of Central University of Pondicherry. Dr. Vinod Vivam uh, in the last session. We have uh, uh, assistant librarian University of Calicut. So everybody uh, has given several inputs 
several insights. So that would be very much useful to the researchers. In the last session, you might have feel uh, that uh, 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 Vinod sir's session regarding plagiarism. So that is very beautiful. Uh, that should be that should be followed by every researcher. So today we have engaged with uh, Dr. Vinod BM. So everything was uh, beautiful and uh, useful to the research community really. So I expect, uh, uh, based on these sessions, we expect more outputs from uh, research colleagues and guides part. As I mentioned in the inaugural session, uh, in the last year, 2021, we had more than 50 Scopus Web of Science or UGC listed uh, journal papers. We had planned to give financial assistance and awards to each and every paper, but we could not complete that uh, search because we are getting more and more paper um, from the part of process college and gates. So we are planning to give in the in a next uh, next uh, occasion. So we, we shall definitely uh, give awards to the uh, papers uh, they, uh, which are indexed in uh, Scopus, Web of Science and uh, uh, UGC list or university list. Definitely we will uh, proceed with that uh, venture. So anyway, <coughs> I feel this seminar was very uh, useful to the process scholars and guides. And let us keep the spirit, uh, let us keep the spirit of conducting good research. Uh, we, we should not go for uh, just, uh, just for, uh, you should not focus only for PhD, but we should conduct good quality research. So that is our aim. PhD is a part, PhD is a part of research that's only that will uh, that, uh, that, that uh, you can achieve after five years or six years so that is a part of PhD, uh, research only or PhD is a beginning of research so it is a, uh, it's only a beginning so we should continue our research in future and we should become good scientists good, good uh, research professionals uh, good researchers in future so that required for the development of country in higher education sector, that required more and more good scientists, professionals uh, required. So from this St. Thomas College, we should have good professional scientists in future in various parts of Kerala, various parts of India and outside India. So with these words, I conclude my uh, uh, words. Uh, thank you very much for giving an opportunity for uh, sharing my insights. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Now I call upon Dr. Viju MJ for the vote of thanks. Good afternoon all on this auspicious occasion of this valedictory session of today's research seminar. I feel honored and privileged for getting an opportunity to propose vote of thanks being the joint coordinator of the national seminars on interdisciplinary research approaches and scholars miss 2022 held on 18 and 19 February 22 by Research Council St. Thomas College with Rishu. First of all, on behalf of the organizing committee of this seminar, I convey deep regards and hearty thanks to our manager, Martoni Nilangavi, Auxiliary Bishop of Trishu, who delivered an inspiring presidential address, and also to Professor P.G. Sangaran, 
pro vice chancellor of pusar who inaugurated the seminar and delivered a powerful keynote address during the inaugural session which held yesterday also our deep gratitude to reverend father bidu panayan garden executive manager to provide all the financial and infrastructural support to make it a success our sincere thanks to dr martin k a our beloved principal for his constant guidance that radiated in a source of energy within us also we convey our hearty thanks to reverend dr anil job concord iqsc coordinator for giving felicitation during inaugural session and for his constructive direction i personally thank all the delegates who blessed us with their presence on inaugural session online sessions as well as this valedictory session i am also very much thankful to all the research council members all committee members of this particular event for their active involvement special thanks to research council for taking an initiative to conduct this program for two days as we usually conducted it for a day previously research council coordinator and dean of research dr chako bm coordinator of this program dr ann mary joint coordinator of research council dr joyce jo have played a very vibrant role to conduct this program both virtually and offline modes they made all the efforts and support in all possible manner to organize this conference in a good manner actually i have no words enough to thank their constant guidance and support provided to shape this may 2022 let me also take this opportunity to thank all the invited speakers for both the days like dr arigat kumar from iit hyderabad dr p p pratibhman from university of calicut dr ruby john scientist regional cancer center to andram Dr. Priya K. Nair, Research Officer, Higher Education Council of Kerala. Dr. P. Baskaran Nair, formerly Professor, Central University of Pondicherry, and Dr. Vinod V. M., Assistant Librarian, University of Calicut, for dealing various topics in connection with the national webinar on interdisciplinary research approaches and methodology of research. My special thanks to all the vice principals. Dr. Alfonso Matthew, Dr. Andrew Johnny, Dr. Edi John, and to all deans, Dr. David Sevi, Dr. C. S. Biju, Dr. Biju John, Dr. Biju Matthew, and Dr. Mijoy Joss, and also chairs of this seminar for both the days, Sister Alfonso, Dr. C. L. Joshi, Dr. Andrew Thomas, Dr. Biju John, Dr. C. S. Biju, Dr. K. M. Francis, Dr. Sanil Raj, Dr. C. F. Binoy. Dr. Saju M I, Dr. Ando P V, Dr. Sabu P J, Dr. Bimala John, and Dr. Jensi Thomas, and also Dr. Bimal Kumar, for giving their intellectual support to this event by chairing each session. At this juncture, I would also like to thank our technical team, committee members like Dr. John Snadavat, Mr. Rajesh Sanjani. Mr. Jaswin Saju, technical assistant; Mr. Fesin, technical supporter; and Mr. Freddy. Without their constant technical support, we could not organize it both offline and online modes. At the same time, tackling all the technical glitches, we express our deep sense of gratitude to all their great efforts. An event of this kind cannot happen overnight. The whole supports must need the wheels start rolling months in advance we have been fortunate enough to be backed by a team of very motivated dedicated scholar student committee members backed by our research guides i cannot thank everyone enough for the involvement they have shown and the willingness they have expected to take on the completion of every 
as as part of this webinar or seminar i just place record of committees like registration and certificate department of physics and botany publicity department of zoology and english food freshman department of zoology and mathematics program and stage department of physics and commerce oral presentations department of chemistry and commerce award and memento committee department of maths and statistics comparing department of zoology commerce and botany hospitality department of commerce due to time constraint i won't mention committee members names but on behalf of research council we convey our hearty thanks for all committee members including scholars and guides to make this scholar meet 2022 a memorable one in the history of the college let me come let me continue today my words are not enough to express the gratitude to our anger ms sindhu job and ms gilna john assistant professors of commerce for anchoring arts and humanity stream for both days and also ms vinaya research scholar in zoology and ms aishwari research scholar in botany for anchoring both common as well as science stream session i am very much thankful to all our present faculty all research guides and non teaching staff members who always stand by us and motivated us i am very much thankful to all the delegates from various institutions across the country and also from our own institution to attend this conference via online mode and offline mode actually after a long deliberations only we the organizing team decided the topic of this seminar as in the discipline research approaches covid 19 brought a wave of shock at all its way such to the world and this pandemic has pushed us to think our own health both physically and mentally although the future is uncertain one thing is for sure no discipline can solve this problem biological sciences only cannot solve this problem though they try to create vaccines we must also think economically environmentally psychologically and sociologically about this viral attack in this pandemic period in the discipline studies functions critically at the intersections of hope and transcending disciplinary walls to make connections across and between disciplines that we caught alfred lord tennyson british poet in his poem ulysses says to strive to see to find and not to kill must be the motto of a research scholar and we hope this national seminar might have enhanced our areas of knowledge and got at least some sparks to our research scholars research areas to think of interdisciplinary or multidisciplinary approaches in our present and future studies as well with all these words let me take this opportunity to thank you all once again for making this event successful thank you is such a prayer that cannot be seen or touched it must be felt by heart thank you all thank you sir thank you for this elaborate thanksgiving dear participants i sincerely appreciate all your attention for the successful completion of the seminar and that brings us to the end of the national seminar on interdisciplinary research approaches and research scholars meet 2022 Uh, dear participants the certificates will be made available to you all next week so once again thank you thank you all